So hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A real pleasure to speak to you today. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Um, maybe for people who aren't familiar, I mean, I'm sure most people are, whether it's the, the film or the beginning of the series, they know a bit about TED. But for people who maybe don't know anything, what can they expect from the new show? They can expect a teddy bear that got wished alive doing the most heinous, uh, degenerate bull crap uh, uh, that you can imagine. And uh, I, as his friend John, do absolutely nothing to stand in the way and am, in fact, complicit in most of it. I mean, you're pretty young. Uh, did you watch the film when it was when it was first out, or did you go yes. back and watch it when you had this land in your lap, the idea of doing this prequel? What were your first thoughts? Uh, yes, uh, to both of those, I was actually at the table read for the first movie, so in a weird way, I've been a part of it uh, for as long as it's been an idea. Loved the movies when they came out. I was definitely too young to watch the first one when it came out, but I, I loved it anyway. Uh, definitely went back, rewatched a bunch to try to get that that sort of pacing and that comedic timing sort of back into my bones before uh, before kicking off with the prequel. But yeah, I mean, was beyond hyped to be a part of it. And of course, it's going back to the '90s, which I know for sure you didn't live through. Um, <laughs> you know, so how was that as a challenge? You know, were you talking to your parents? You know, where did you start? Because you know, it's really capturing that era um and, and it's not just kind of you know it's the family dynamics and the fashion as well as everything else you know so where do you begin with that uh well the fashion uh i mean 90s fashion there there are parts of it that are very good i didn't get the benefit of good 90s fashion in this show i uh was on the receiving end of a very very talented wardrobe team that worked their damnedest to make me look like an absolute dweeb and i think they succeeded uh you know it's all like boxy oversized it makes my limbs look too long and my torso look too short um which you know i think i think comes through in the intended fashion of making me again look like an absolute dork but the the other 90s thing that uh sort of humiliated me was during the porn episode there's a moment where i have to put a, a videotape into the into the vhs player and on the first take, I put it in both upside down and backwards <laughs> and uh, got laughed at a lot by the crew. So, yeah. It's probably because you made them feel really old like you did just me just now. <laughs> and, and of course, you're playing a, a young Mark Wahlberg. Um, when you're playing someone from another era, you know, where do you start from? I mean, are you starting from kind of the, the script as John Bennett? Are you Were you studying Mark thinking, okay, well, what's... What was he like at that age? Um, you know, do you sort of go from the inside out or the outside of the character in? So a little bit of both. I definitely did, uh, as I said, a lot of rewatching of the Ted movies just to really familiarize myself with where this guy ends up. Because obviously I'm playing the 16 year old version of him and there has to be some sort of like change or progression from then to him ending up as such a total loser in the movies. Um, but I wanted to be really careful not to do like a Mark Wahlberg impression because, you know, I'm not playing young Mark Wahlberg. I'm playing John Bennett, 16 year old loser. In in that area, a lot of it really does come through just from the script, just from the text. It's it's sort of all right there. Everything you need for his characterization there. You know, there are a couple of like mannerisms, like the sort of breathiness that that Mark has that I tried to incorporate a little bit into the voice. But pretty much everything I needed was was in the writing. Working with Seth MacFarlane, I mean, we know he's just such a, a comedy genius from all his stuff in the background, you know, Family Guy, but also the other Ted films. But of course, you know, he's doing the voiceover for an animated bear. What was the collaboration like? You know, uh, were you sort of having moments to talk ab about the script? Was it all added in afterwards? I can't even imagine how, how you film those sections. Yes. So he was directing every episode. He was on set every day, every shot. Uh, and he was doing the the voice of the bear live. I think they re-recorded it after the fact, but just so that everybody could get the timing, the the, um, the back and forth. It allowed us to do, you know, a fair amount of improv when we wanted to, if we felt like that was necessary. Yeah, I mean, the collaboration was pretty hands-on, I would say. And I don't think it would have been possible had he not been on set every day wearing a billion different hats. And, and what was it like um, to work with him? I mean... It's just one of these people, I'm sure, if, if, if he can produce stuff that's so funny, I guess him as a guy yeah. is also hilarious, just being in his company. I mean, he is, he is hilarious. And like, 
you know, he's been at the forefront of successful comedy for, I, I think, the 25th anniversary of Family Guy premiering was just a few days ago. So he's been at it a while. And you would think that success sometimes like makes somebody into a bit of a dick, but he's just a nice guy. He's very down to earth. He's down to 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 chill, to play around with the material. There was always room to have fun. And I don't understand how he gets anything done. He seems to be the busiest man in that I've ever met. It, it's it's truly crazy. I don't know where he finds the bandwidth. And I guess one of the things that you know makes his brand of comedy quite unique is that it just is no holds barred. You know, like there is nothing that's off the table. And yeah. I guess even the fact that it goes back to the 90s perhaps allows a little bit more bandwidth than you might, you know, be allowed in a sort of contemporary show. You know, saying lots of un-PC things, plenty of swearing. Was there anything that you balked at when you sort of first read it? Like, oh, can I say that? Or was it all sort of fine for you? You managed to get, get on board with it. I mean, I was pretty on board with it. All of the most horrid stuff comes out of either the bear's mouth or Scott Grimes's mouth in the show. So I was like, ooh, I'm I'm free and clear. I don't have anything to worry about. But also, even if there was like, you know, like kind of like little stuff that John had to say, first of all, Seth MacFarlane is so good at getting away with that kind of stuff just in the way that he writes it. Um, and second of all, the 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 jokes and you know to to use your phrase the non PCness of the comedy, I think is largely forgiven because we're not laughing because we agree with the things coming out of these characters' mouths. We're laughing because it's funny that they believe it. And what was it like? I guess bouncing off um, your your fellow cast and particularly you know the family dynamics, which are integral to sort of seeing how. Uh, your character develops. And I wonder if Seth was like borrowing some stuff from Family Guy with that as well. You know, there's kind of like lots of hilarious moments around the dinner table and things like that. There was a bit of a rehearsal process where we got to do like the big family dinner scenes and like the big living room scenes, those like long eight, nine, 10 page scenes uh, to really lock down sort of what everybody's role is in that. And then off camera, it was just, it felt like a family by the end. We were all just, we we love each other and we were just chilling and hanging out. It was great. And of course you delve into sort of the trials and tribulations of being at high school. I mean, how much did that chime with with your experience or again, kind of being in another era? Was, this, was there anything that was very different about it? No, it was pretty similar to my high, high school experience. Oh, a junior in high school who smokes a bunch of weed with his degenerate friends uh watches bad movies eats like garbage and is a virgin yeah that all checks out with my with my junior year experience there was not a lot of heavy lifting that I had to do to bridge between myself and this character for sure. And did you have a favorite scene or, or what, like a line that you found funniest? What were some of the memorable moments on set? I think the funniest line, the funniest joke in the entire season, I think is uh, the Milgram experience, uh, the Milgram experiment joke in the Halloween episode where Ted gets like a group of people to all agree to go invade Poland. Uh, that is so like, fastball down the middle my sense of humor i really love that uh favorite moments on set i think one of them would be the day where i don't even remember how we decided this but we all just sort of agreed that we were just gonna try and jump scare georgia all day who played my cousin so anytime she would walk into a room like there was one point where she like sat down in her chair and i was underneath it and jumped out and and scared that was a great day. That was really fun. And in terms of kind of the takeaways from the show, I mean, it does feel like we're at this moment in time where everyone does just need a bit of a laugh and to kind of put your sort of, you know, your worries at the door. And, it, and you know, it's kind of got that retro stoner comedy vibe going on. I just think a lot of people can have fun with it, don't you think? I think people are having a lot of fun with it. Like, you know, I know I know it's premiering in the UK in, in a couple of days or maybe it already has by the time this comes out, but... You know, just in the few weeks since it's been out here in the States, I've been getting people in my DMs saying like, hey, I've been going through a personally very rough time and this has been a bright spot over the last week while I've been watching it. And I'm just like, oh, like what better response could I even hope for from this from this thing 
this incredible show, obviously, but from being paid to tell dick jokes for four months, like it's that that there's no better response that that could come. I think people have been really enjoying it. What's next for you? I mean, are we uh, expecting further seasons of seasons of this? Have you got other projects in the pipeline? I mean, fingers crossed on on a season two. It was such a blast to film. People seem to be wanting it. That's that's you know half the comments on on all my posts on Instagram about it is like, where's where's the season two? Uh, I would love to do that. You know, for me personally, we're still coming back from the strike. I think the engine of the industry is still spinning back up a little bit from that. So nothing confirmed or talk aboutable as of yet, but looking forward to getting back to work for sure. And what's on your sort of bucket list? Are you obviously you've sort of uh, nailed the, the, the comedy roles. Um, is there another genre you'd like to try? A director that you're dying to work with? Who would be on your list? I mean, I want to do it all. That's the fun of this job, right? Is that every single project is completely different from any other. And, you know, there's there's obviously some that are better experiences to film or, or you know, such as this show than others. But I really do want to do everything. Specifically, though, there's two things. I really would love to play like an irredeemable villain. Like those roles look so fun and they, it feels so like outside of how I operate in day-to-day -day life that it would be really fun to try and step into that. And I would just love uh, to do theater again. I did it for the first time in college and uh, moved here to New York to try and do it professionally, but then I got Ted and then there was a strike and then, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff happened. Uh, so I would love, I would love the opportunity to do that for sure. Mm, amazing. So theater and Potential Bond villain in the future. Let's see. Oh, oh Bond villain. That'd be so dumb. <laughs> well, thank you so much for chatting to me. Um, cannot wait for everyone else uh, here in the UK to get the chance to see Ted. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Good to talk Lovely to you. Lovely to chat to you. Thank you. Bye.